Dominion City Tapes Ministry, bringing you the Word of God with simplicity and understanding. One word from God is all you need to turn your life around. Listen and be blessed. I believe that today God wants to do unusual things in the life of people. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has he entered the heart of man. What God has prepared for those who love him and those who seek him. human relationship like marriage relationship we found out that there are primary and secondary causes of problems the secondary ones are things like you know you said the wrong thing to your wife you're not um, doing what you should be doing um, you know the bickering the fighting the quarrels and all of the things and so because of that many marriage counselors approach marriage problem from crisis management approach from that perspective oh there is another fire breaking out in the kitchen we'll go and put that one off oh another fire has broken out in the kitchen you know the fire brigade approach you ring them sirens are going off everywhere you rush down there and stop that one and in your life it could be appearing in form of different problems oh finances my business has just collapsed you start fire brigade prayer fasting that one goes oh ah, my child is dying the rush prayer to that area pastors prayer warriors they stop that ah ah did you hear i just lost my job they rush again you get another job ah these are treatment of symptoms a marriage is the primary causative factor for most of the problems you now see is the erosion of affection and first love when couples, even when you were chasing that girl, the lady didn't have to call for prayer meeting for you to buy her things. No pastor prayed for you to send her text, I love you, you know, how are you doing at work today, how are you? It's, it's love that is over, that is bubbling out of your heart, that is being expressed in terms of those things. When love dies, when affection dies, when relationship dies, then Every little thing becomes a problem. You see, ah, sir, you should be coming back early. How can you be coming back every day by one? Leave your wife and children there. You are addressing secondary problem. How come he doesn't come back to see the one he loves? Love that can make you not want to go to work. Just to stay a whole day with a person. Now, you want to avoid a person. That's secondary problem. That's how... Christianity of today, it has reduced to God, give me, give me that, give me husband, give me car, give me wife. You, you get a wife, a house burns down. Oh God, how can you let this happen? House, okay. Another miracle. You are Christianity that is miracle driven. That is the kind of relationship the children of Israel had with God in the Old Testament. And the Bible said with that generation, three million people, God was not pleased. Who will be the man? Who will be the woman that will be pleased with exploitative relationship? God has become a tool for getting our, our ends, you know, just satisfying our needs. The real problem is relationship. The real problem is relationship. The real problem is relationship. Because you see these things you are praying about. And we don't pray about the real thing. That's the problem. The real problem is relationship. And you don't start solving that problem until you realize the importance of it. You see, God say you delight yourself in me. What happens? I give you the desires of your heart. If you put relationship first, things will follow. He says, seek you first his kingdom, his kingdom and his righteousness. And then every other thing. And what are the every other thing? He said, the things that the Gentiles are seeking. Cars, houses, 
shall be added. Put relationship first. Then you won't have to beg me too much and fast to convince your husband to buy you a new dress. That's what he's saying. Put relationship first and you don't have to beg me for money to make her. Put relationship first. You don't have to beg me to buy you a shoe. It will be a special joy to me to do it. Put relationship first. That's why many prayers are not answered. Amazingly, the children of Israel got into one of those their tantrums they threw at heaven just to get things. And they started crying, this manna we've been eating every day. Uh -uh, can't somebody change me? We remember what we used to enjoy in Egypt, the melons, the cucumbers. I've even tried some of them and I'm wondering what the enjoyment was. But anyway, they started complaining again. And Moses cried to the Lord. The Lord said, okay. What they are asking for is meat. Tell them tomorrow. They will eat meat so much till it's coming out of their nostrils. Like, it's not a problem for me at all. Even Moses doubted that. One time I saw Moses doubt God. The only time in the Bible. Because Moses told God, even if you bring all the fishes in the ocean, three million people, where will you get enough meat to give this one? And God said to him, we will see tomorrow if I'm not God. Anyway, the scripture said, the next day, God asked the east wind to supply them meat. Wind. You see how easy it is? Wind, ordinary wind. All these things, forces of nature, are servants of God. All of them. Wind, go and bring them. The east wind went and found where uh, these flocks of birds, millions of them, he just carried them forcefully. And when he got to the camp of the children of Israel, he started dropping them there. Pick as much as you want. Anyway, the scripture said they, they ate and ate till they began to almost vomit the meat. But the worst thing is that their stomach got filled but the scripture said he sent leanness into their soul I don't know if you understand what I mean by that I mean you got all the material things you want but you are still dying and hungry and I've met a situation like that before where you think sleep is what you need and now you are tired of the sleep the sleep is now a problem you say okay it's, I think it's this food now you don't want to see the food you are tired. The real problem is not outside. It's inside. It's sent leanness in their soul. He said, all you want from me is things, things, things. Now have it. Let's see if you will be satisfied. You know, when you meet somebody who is still maybe under the bridge, still going, maybe went hungry and all that, and you're preaching like this, say, let God give me first. After that, we can see if there is any other thing. You no, know, like when you talk about money doesn't satisfy, uh, wealth doesn't make you happy. I've had a number of people tell me, let me have it first. After it, we can talk about what else. It's like the way the natural man's marriage, the worldly marriage is. The ones that are not in are crying every day. They want to get married. The ones that are in are looking for a way to escape. You won't go very far on earth. And worst of all, when you have everything ends here, you won't be happy with the state you'll find yourself if you don't change the priority of your life and put God first. Idolatry is not just making wood and something and bowing to it. That one is bad. But idolatry is when any other thing, whether it's career, whether it's human being, whether it's anything, competes with or takes the place of God in your pursuit, in your life. That God that will compete with the true God in your life won't find it funny. And you, worshipping him, will not find it funny. For God will forsake not only the idol worshiper, he will forsake the idol. One time he removed the head 
and the hands of one particular idol called Dagon in the Bible. In Egypt, he told Moses, I'm declaring war on all the gods of Egypt. To both you and your God. Why do you think the prophets of Baal took up the challenge of Elijah? It's possible that Baal had power to bring fire. But how come that day Baal didn't show up? They cried to Baal for morning to leave. I know magicians can cause fire to come out. It's not outside Satan's jurisdiction. How come Baal didn't show up? Somebody had his head being squeezed in the realm of the spirit. That Baal himself was crying for deliverance and the people were crying to him to come and help them. And he was saying, if these people know what I'm suffering here, they should be stop all this prayer. Let this man release my head. The Bible says he spoiled principalities and powers and made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. The day God took warfare to the kingdom of darkness, the devil swore never to fight again. If you get what I'm about to show you now, if you have had delayed answers to prayers, if you have had certain things you have not been able to get God to do for years, you will get it this morning. I said this to provoke you, but I say it because it's true. I can't remember anything I've asked God that he has never done for me. Most of the time, if I pray for you personally, you notice I say something to God. I said, I thank you because you always hear me. That's, that's, that's what I tell him. And it's true because that is my consciousness. And maybe you should put that word down. Favor is not fair. There's a difference between favor and justice. Hmm? Justice is getting what you deserve. Favor is getting what you don't deserve. But why do you get it? Though you don't deserve it. Just because somebody up there 